Section 6.5.5 Overweight Blocks If a validator set is compromised, they may create and propose a block which, though valid, takes an inordinate amount of time to execute and validate. This is a problem since a validator group could reasonably form a block which takes a very long time to execute, unless some particular piece of information is already known allowing a shortcut, e.g. factoring a large prime. If a single collator knew that information, then they would have a clear advantage in getting their own candidates accepted as long as the others were busy processing the old block. We call these blocks overweight. Protection against validators submitting and validating these blocks largely falls under the same guise as for invalid blocks, though with an additional caveat. Since the time taken to execute a block, and thus its status as overweight, is subjective, the final outcome of a vote on misbehavior will fall into essentially three camps. One possibility is that the block is definitely not overweight. In this case, more than two-thirds declare that they could execute the block within some limit, e.g. 50% of the total time allowed between blocks. Another is that the block is definitely overweight. This would be more if the two-thirds declare that they could not execute the block within said limit. One final possibility is a fairly equal split of two opinion between validators. In this case, we may choose to do some proportionate in this case, we may choose to do some proportionate punishment. To ensure validators can predict when they may be proposing an overweight block, it may be sensible to require them to publish information on their own performance for each block. Over a sufficient period of time, this should allow them to profile their processing speed relative to the peers that would be judging them. 6.5.6 collator insurance. One issue remains for validators. Unlike the POW networks, to check a collator's block for validity, they must actually execute the transactions in it. Malicious collators can feed invalid or overweight blocks to validators, causing them grief, wasting their resources, and exacting a potentially substantial opportunity cost. To mitigate this, we propose a simple strategy on the part of validators. Firstly, parachain block candidates set to validators must be signed from a relay chain account with funds. If they are not, then the validator should drop it immediately. Secondly, such candidates should be ordered in priority by a combination, e.g. multiplication, of the amount of funds in the account up to some cap the number of previous blocks that the collator has successfully proposed in the past, not to mention any previous punishments, and the proximity factor to the winning ticket as discussed previously. The cap should be the same as the punitive damages paid to the validator in the case of them sending an invalid block. To disincentivize collators from sending invalid or overweight block candidates to validators, any validator may place in the next block a transaction including the offending block alleging misbehavior with the effect of transferring some or all of the funds in the misbehaving collator's account to the aggrieved validator. This type of transaction front runs any others to ensure the collator cannot remove the funds prior to the punishment. The amount of funds transferred as damages is a dynamic parameter yet to be modeled, but will likely be a proportion of the validator block reward to reflect the level of grief caused. To prevent malicious validators arbitrarily confiscating collator funds, the collator may appeal the validator's decision with a jury of randomly chosen validators in return for placing a small deposit. If they find in the validator's favor, the deposit is consumed by them. If not, the deposit is returned and the validator is fined. Since the validator is in a much more vaulted position, the fine will likely be rather hefty. Section 6.6 .6. Interchain Transaction Routing Interchain transaction routing is one of the essential maintenance tasks of the relay chain and its validators. This is the logic which governs how a posted transaction, often shortened to simply post, gets from being a desired output from one source parachain to being a non-negotiable input of another destination parachain without any trust requirements. 
We choose the wording above carefully. Notably, we don't require there to have been a transaction in the source parachain to have explicitly sanctioned this post. The only constraints we place upon our model is that parachains must provide, packaged as part of their overall block processing output, the posts which are the result of the block's execution. These posts are structured as several FIFO queues. The number of lists is known as the routing base and may be around 16. Notably, this number represents the quantity of parachains we can support without having to resort to multi-phase routing. Initially, Polkadot will support this kind of direct routing. However, we will outline one possible multi-phase routing process, hyper-routing, as a means of scaling out well past the initial set of parachains. We assume that all participants know the subgroupings for next two blocks, n and n plus 1. In summary, the routing system follows these stages. Collator subscript s, contact members of validators, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase s, close square bracket. Collator subscript s, for each subgroup S, ensure at least one member of validators, open square bracket N, close square bracket, open square bracket S, close square bracket, in contact. Collators, subscript S. For each subgroup S, assume egress, open square bracket N minus 1, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket, open square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase s, close square bracket, is available. All incoming post data to capital S from last block. Collator subscript s, compose block candidate lowercase b for uppercase s, parentheses open, b dot header, b dot ext, b dot proof, b dot receipt, b dot egress, close parentheses. Collator subscript s. Send proof information, proof open square bracket uppercase s close square bracket equals open parentheses b dot header b dot ext b dot proof b dot receipt close parentheses to validators open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, op open square bracket, capital S, close square bracket. Collator, subscript S, ensure external transaction data, b.ext, is made available to other collators and validators. Collator, subscript S, for each subgroup, lowercase s, send egress information, egress, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase s, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket, equals, open parentheses, b dot header, b dot receipt, b dot egress, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket, close parentheses, to the receiving subgroups members of next block, Validators, open square bracket, n plus 1, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket. Validator, subscript v, pre-connect all same set members for next block. Let n equals chain, open square bracket, n plus 1, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase v, close square bracket. Connect all validators, lowercase v, such that chain, open square bracket, n plus 1, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase v, close square bracket, equals uppercase n. Validator, subscript v, collate all data ingress for this block. For each subgroup, lowercase s, retrieve egress, open square bracket, n minus 1, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket, open square bracket, chain, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase v, close square bracket, close square bracket, get from other validators, lowercase v, such that chain, open square bracket, n, close square bracket, open square bracket, 
lowercase v, close square bracket, equals chain, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase v, close square bracket, equals chain, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase v, close square bracket. Possibly going via randomly selected other validators for proof of attempt. Validator subscript v. Accept candidate proofs for this block proof, open square bracket, chain, open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase v, close square bracket, close square bracket, vote block validity. Validator subscript v. Accept candidate egress data for next block. For each subgroup lowercase s, accept egress open square bracket, lowercase n, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase s, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase n, close square bracket. Vote block egress availability, republish among interested validators, lowercase v, such that chain, open square bracket, n plus one, close square bracket, open square bracket, lowercase v, close square bracket, equals chain, open square bracket, n plus one, close square bracket, open square bracket, uppercase v, close square bracket. Validator subscript V until consensus. Where egress open square bracket lowercase n close square bracket open square bracket from close square bracket open square bracket to close square bracket is the current egress queue information for posts going from parachain from to parachain to in block number n. Collator subscript S is a collator for parachain uppercase S. Validators open square bracket lowercase n close square bracket open square bracket lowercase s close square bracket is the set of validators for parachain lowercase s at the block number lowercase n. Conversely, chain open square bracket lowercase n close square bracket open square bracket lowercase v close square bracket is the parachain to which validator lowercase v is assigned on block number lowercase n. Block dot egress open square bracket to close square bracket is the egress queue of posts from some parachain block block whose destination parachain is two. Since collators collect transaction fees based upon their blocks becoming canonical, they are incentivized to ensure that for each next block destination, the subgroup's members are informed of the egress queue from the present block. Validators are incentivized only to form a consensus on a parachain block, as such they care little about which collator's block ultimately becomes canonical. In principle, a validator could form an allegiance with a collator and conspire to reduce the chances of other collator's blocks becoming canonical. However, this is both difficult to arrange due to random selection of validators for parachains and could be defended against with a reduction in fees payable for parachain blocks which hold up the consensus process. Section 6.6.1 .6 External Data Availability Ensuring a parachain's external data is actually available is a perennial issue with decentralized systems aiming to distribute workload across the network. At the heart of the issue is the availability problem, which states that since it is neither possible to make a non-interactive proof of availability nor any sort of proof of non-availability for a BFT system to properly validate any transition whose correctness relies upon the availability of some external data, the maximum number of acceptably Byzantine nodes plus one of the system must attest to the data being available. For a system to scale out properly, like Polkadot, this invites a problem. If a constant proportion of validators must attest to the availability of the data, and assuming that validators will want to actually store the data before asserting it is available, then how do we avoid the problem of the bandwidth storage requirements increasing with the system size and therefore the number of validators? One possible answer would be to have a separate set of validators, availability guarantors, whose order grows sublinearly with the size of Polkadot as a whole. This is described in 6.5.3. We also have a secondary trick. 
As a group, collators have an intrinsic incentive to ensure that all data is available for their chosen parachain, since without it, they are unable to author further blocks from which they can collect transaction fees. Collators also form a group, membership of which is varied due to the random nature of parachain validator groups, non-trivial to enter and easy to prove. Recent collators, perhaps of the last few thousand blocks, are therefore allowed to issue challenges to the availability of external data for a particular parachain block to validators for a small bond. Validators must contact those from the apparently offending validator subgroup who testified and either acquire and return the data to the collator or escalate the matter by testifying to the lack of availability, direct refusal to provide the data counts as a bond confiscating offense, therefore the misbehaving validator will likely just drop the connection, and contacting additional validators to run the same test. In the latter case, the collator's bond is returned. Once a quorum of validators who can make such non-availability testimonials is reached, they are released, the misbehaving subgroup is punished, and the block reverted. Section 6.6.2 Posts Routing Each parachain header includes an egress tree root. This is the root of a tree containing the routing base bins each bin being a concatenated list of egress posts. Merkle proofs may be provided across parachain validators to prove that a particular parachain's block had a particular egress queue for a particular destination parachain. At the beginning of processing a parachain block, each other parachain's egress queue bound for said block is merged into our block's ingress queue. We assume strong, probably CSPR, sub-block ordering to achieve a deterministic operation that offers no favoritism between any parachain block pairing. Collators calculate the new queue and drain the egress queues according to the parachain's logic. The contents of the ingress queue is written explicitly into the parachain block. This has two main purposes. Firstly, it means that the parachain can be trustlessly synchronized in isolation from the other parachains. Secondly, it simplifies the data logistics should the entire ingress queue not be able to be processed in a single block. Validators and collators are able to process the following blocks without having to source the queue's data specially. If the parachain's ingress queue is above a threshold amount at the end of block processing, then it is marked saturated on the relay chain, and no further messages may be delivered to it until it is cleared. Merkle proofs are used to demonstrate fidelity of the collator's operation in the parachain's block proof. Section 6.6.3 Critique One minor flaw relating to this basic mechanism is the post-bomb attack. This is where all parachains send the maximum amount of posts possible to a particular parachain. While this ties up the target's ingress queue at once, no damage is done over and above a standard transaction DOS attack. Operating normally with a set of well-synchronized and non-malicious collators and validators for uppercase N parachains, uppercase N times uppercase M total validators and uppercase L collators per parachain, we can break down the total data pathways per block to validator, uppercase M minus 1 plus uppercase L plus uppercase L colon uppercase M minus 1 for the other validators in the parachain set. Uppercase L for each collator providing a candidate parachain block and a second uppercase L for each collator of the next block requiring the egress payloads of the previous block. The latter is actually more like worst case operation since it is likely that the collators will share such data. Collator colon uppercase M plus lowercase k uppercase N colon uppercase M. For a connection to each relevant parachain block validator, lowercase k uppercase N for seeding the egress payloads to some subset of each parachain validator group for the next block, and possibly some favored collators. As such, the data pathways per node grow linearly with the overall complexity of the system. 
While this is reasonable, as the system scales into hundreds or thousands of parachains, some communication latency may be absorbed in exchange for a lower complexity growth rate. In this case, a multi-phase routing algorithm may be used in order to reduce the number of instantaneous pathways at a cost of introducing storage buffers and latency.